Welcome back. Welcome back. Welcome back, everybody, to another chapter of A Court of Mist and Fury, written by Sarah J. Moss, read by yours truly, Freewater, with the exclamation point for the added emphasis. We are back here today from the last chapter. Uh, more, just absolute more betrayal. Uh, the sisters are, are captured now with the stupid betrayal queens, with the stupid betrayal Tamlin, with the stupid betrayal jury and resummon, with the stupid king of Highburn. They're all stupid, but smart, I guess, because they got them in a vice right now. They can't do anything because Azriel will get killed first. They can't do anything because now her sisters will get killed. And they can't do anything because all their magic has been siphoned. So how the heck, what the heck is going to happen in chapter 65? This was some new hell. Some new level of nightmare. I even went so far as to try to wake myself up. But there they were, in their nightgowns, the silk and lace, dirty, torn. Elaine was quietly sobbing, the gag soaked with her tears. Nesta, hair disheveled as if she'd fought like a wildcat, was panting as she took us in, took in the cauldron. You made a very big mistake, the king said to Ryson, my mate's arms banded around me, the day you went after that book. I had no need of it. I was content to let it lie hidden. But the moment your forces started sniffing around, I decided who better that to be my liaison to the human realm than my newly reborn friend Jurian. He'd just finished all those months re of recovering from the process and longed to see what his former home had become. So he was more than happy to visit the continent for an extended visit. Indeed, the queen smiled at him, bowed their heads. Ryza's arms tightened in silent warning. The brave cunning Jurian, who suffered so badly at the end of the war, now my ally, here to help me convince these queens to aid in my cause. For a price of his own, of course, but it has no bearing here. And wiser to work with me, my men, than to allow you monsters in the night court to rule and attack. Jurian was right to warn their majesties that you'd try to take the book that you would feed them lies of love and goodness, when he had seen what the High Lord of the Night Court was capable of. The hero of the human forces, reborn as a gesture to the human world of my good faith. I do not wish to invade the continent, but to work with them, my powers ensconced by the court from prying eyes, just to show them the benefits. A smirk at Azrael who could hardly lift his head to snarl back. Such impressive attempts to infiltrate their sacred place, Shadow Singer, and utter proof to their majesties, of course, that your court is not as benevolent as you seem. Liar! I hissed and whirled on the queens, daring only a step away from Rise. They are liars, and if you do not let my sisters go, I will slaughter. Do you hear the threats, the language they use in the night court? the king said to the mortal queens, their guards now around us in a half circle. Slaughter. Ultimatums. They wish to end life. I desire to give it. The eldest queen said to him, refusing to acknowledge me, my words, Then show us. Prove this gift you mentioned. Rise and tug me back against him. He said quietly to the queen, You're a fool. The king cut in. Is she? Why submit to old age and ailments when what I offer is so much better? He waved a hand toward me. Eternal youth. Do you deny the benefits? A mortal queen becomes one who might reign forever. Of course, there are risks. The transition can be difficult. But a strong-willed individual could survive. The youngest queen, the dark-haired one, smiled slightly. Arrogant youth and bitter old age. Only the two others, the ones who wore white and black, 
seem to hesitate, stepping closer to each other and their towering guards. The ancient queen lifted her chin. Show us. Demonstrate it can be done, that it is safe. She had spoken of eternal youth that day, had spat in my face about it. Two-faced bitch. The king nodded. Why do you think I asked my dear friend Iante to see who Fyra Acheron would appreciate having with her for eternity? Even as horror filled my ears with roaring silence, I glanced at the queens, the question no doubt written on my face. But the king explained. Oh, I asked them first. They deemed it too uncouth to betray two young, misguided women. Iante had no such qualms. Consider it my wedding present for you both, he added to Tamlin. But Tamlin's face tightened. What? The king cocked his head, savoring every word. I think the high priestess was waiting until you returned to tell you. But didn't you ever ask why she believed I might be able to break the bargain? Why she had so many musings on the idea? So many millennia have the high priestesses been forced to their knees for the high lords. And during those years, she dwelled in that foreign court. Such an open mind she was. Once we met, once I painted for her a portrait of a Prithian free of high lords, where the high priestesses might rule with grace and wisdom, she didn't take much convincing. I was going to vomit. Hamlin, to his credit, looked like he might too. Lucian's face had slackened. She sold out. She sold out Fyra's family. To you. I had told Iante everything about my sisters. She had asked. Asked who they were. Where they lived. And I had been so stupid. So broken. I had fed her every detail. Sold out. The king snorted. Or saved from the shackles of mortal death. Iante suggested they were both strong-willed women. Like their sister. No doubt they'll survive and prove to our queens it can be done, if one has the strength. My heart stopped. Don't you. The king cut me off. I would suggest bracing yourselves. And then hell exploded in the hall. Power, white and unending and hideous, barreled into us. All I knew was Rison's body covering mine as we were all thrown to the floor. The shout of pain as he took the brunt of the king's power. Cassian twisted, wings flaring wide as he shielded Asriel. His wings. His wings. Cassian's scream as his wings shredded under talons of pure magic was the most horrific sound I'd ever heard. More surge for him, but too late. Rise was moving in an instant, as if he'd lunge for the king. The power hit us again and again. I slammed to his knees. My, my sisters were shrieking over their gags. But Elaine's cry. A warning. A warning to. To my right, now exposed, Tamlin ran for me. To grab me at last. I hurled a knife at him. As hard as I could. He had to dive to miss it. And he backed away at the second one I had ready. Gaping at me. At Rise as if he could indeed see the mating bond between us. But I whirled as soldiers pressed in, cutting us off. Whirled and saw Cassian and Azrael on the ground, Jurian laughing softly at the blood gushing from Cassian's ravaged wings. Shreds of them remained. I scrambled for him. My blood. It might be enough. Be. More. On her knees beside Cassian. Hurtled for the king with a cry of pure wrath. He sent a punch of power to her. She dodged, a knife angled in her hand, and... Azrael cried out in pain. She froze, stopped a foot from the throne. Her knife clattered to the floor. King rose. What a mighty queen you are, he breathed, and more backed away, step by step. What a prize, the king said, that black gaze devouring her. Azrael's head lifted from where he was sprawled in his own blood, eyes full of rage and pain as he snarled at the king. Don't you touch her. Moore looked at Azrael. There was a real fear there. Fear and something else. She didn't stop moving until she again kneeled beside him 
and pressed a hand to his wound. Ezreal hissed but covered her bloody fingers with his own. Rise positioned himself between me and the king as I dropped to my knees before Cassian. I ripped at the leather covering my forearm. Put the prettier one in first, the king said. More already forgotten. I twisted only to have the king's guard grab me from behind. Rise was instantly there. But Azrael shouted, back arching, as the king's poison worked its way in. Please refrain, the king said, from getting any stupid ideas, Rysand. He smiled at me. If any of you interfere, the Shadow Singer dies. Pity about the other brute's wings. He gave my sisters a mockery of a bow. Ladies, eternity awaits. Prove to their majesties the cauldron is safe for strong-willed individuals. I shook my head, unable to breathe, to think a way out of it. Elaine was shaking, sobbing as she was hauled forward toward the cauldron. Nesta began thrashing against the men that held her. Tamlin said, Stop! The king did no such thing. Lucian beside Tamlin again put a hand on his sword. Stop this! Nesta was bellowing at the guards, at the king as Elaine yielded step after step toward the cauldron, as the king waved his hand and liquid filled it to the brim. No. No. Queens only watched, stone-faced, and rise and more separated from me by those guards did not dare to even lift a muscle. Tamlin spat at the king. This is not part of our deal. Stop this, now. I don't care, the king said simply. Tamlin launched himself at the throne, as if he'd rip him to shreds. The white-hot magic slammed into him, shoving him to the ground, leashing him. Tamlin strained against the collar of light on his neck, around his wrists. His golden power flared to no avail. I tore at the fist still gripping my own, sliced at it, over and over. Lucian staggered a step forward as Elaine was gripped between two guards and hoisted up. She began kicking then weeping while her feet slammed into the sides of the cauldron as if she'd push off it, as if she'd knock it down. That is enough! Lucian surged for Elaine, for the cauldron, and the king's power leashed him too. On the ground beside Tamlin, his single eye wide, Lucian had the good sense to look horrified as he glanced between Elaine and the High Lord. Please! I begged the king who motioned Elaine to be shoved into the water. Please! I will do anything. I will give you anything. I shot to my feet, stepping away from where Cassian lay prostrate and looked to those queens. Please, you do not need proof. I am proof that it works. Jurian is proof it is safe. The ancient queen said, You are a thief and a liar. You conspired with our sister. Your punishment should be the same as hers. Consider this a gift instead. Elaine's foot hit the water, and she screamed, screamed in terror that hit me so deep I began sobbing. Please, I said to none of them. Nesta was still fighting, still roaring through her gag. Elaine, who Nesta would have killed and whored and stolen for. Elaine, who had been gentle and sweet. Elaine, who was to marry a lord's son who hated fairies. The guard shoved my sister into the cauldron in a single movement. My cry hadn't finished sounding before Elaine's head went under. She did not come up. Nesta's screaming was the only sound. Cassian blindly lurched toward her, toward her moaning in pain. The King of Hyvern bows slightly to the queens. Behold. Rise, a wall of guards still cleaving us, curled his fingers into a fist. But he did not move, as Moore and I did not dare move, not with Azrael's life dangling in the king's grasp. And as if it had been tipped by invisible hands, the cauldron turned on its side. More water than seemed possible dumped out in a cascade. Black, smoke-coated water. And Elaine, as if she'd been thrown by a wave, washed onto the stones face down. Her legs were so pale, so delicate, I couldn't remember the last time I'd seen them bare. The queens pushed forward, 
alive. She had to be alive. Had to have wanted to live. Elaine sucked in breath. Her fine bone back rising. Her wet nightgown nearly sheer. And as she rose from the ground onto her elbows, the gag in place as she twisted to look at me, Nesta began roaring again. Pale skin started to glow. Her face had somehow become more beautiful. Infinitely beautiful. And her ears, Elaine's ears were now pointed beneath her sodden hair. The queens gasped. And for a moment, all I could think of was my father. What would he do? What he would say when his most beloved daughter looked at him with a fey face. So we can survive, the dark-haired youngest breathed, eyes bright. I fell to my knees. The guard's not bothering to grab me as I sobbed. What he had done. What he had done. The Hellcat now, if you'll be so kind, the King of Hybern said. I whipped my head to Nesta as she went silent. The cauldron righted itself. Cassian again stirred, slumping on the floor, but his hand twitched toward Nesta. Elaine was still shivering on the wet stones, her nightgown shoved up to her thighs, her small breasts fully visible beneath the soaked fabric. Guards snickered. Lucian snarled at the king over the bite of the magic at his throat. Don't just leave her on the damned floor. There was a flare of light and a scrape, and then Lucian was stalking toward Elaine freed of his restraints. Tamlin remained leashed on the ground, a gag of white, iridescent magic in his mouth now. But his eyes were on Lucian as... Lucian took off his jacket, kneeling before Elaine. She cringed away from the coat, from him. The guards hauled Nesta toward the cauldron. There were different kinds of torture, I realized. There was a torture that I had endured, that Rise had endured. And then there was this. The torture that Rise had worked so hard those fifty years to avoid. The nightmares that haunted him. To be unable to move. To fight. While our loved ones were broken. My eyes met with those of my mate. Agony rippled in that violet stare. Rage and guilt and utter agony. The mirror. My own. Nesta fought every step of the way. She did not make it easy for them. She clawed and kicked and bucked. It was not enough. We were not enough to save her. I watched as she was hoisted up. Elaine remained shuddering on the ground, Lucian's coat draped around her. She did not look at the cauldron behind her, not as Nesta's thrashing feet slammed into the water. Cassian stirred again, his shredded wings twitching and spraying blood, his muscles quivering. <clears throat> and Nesta shouts, her raging, his eyes fluttered open, glazed and unseeing an answer to some call in his blood, a promise he had made to her. But pain knocked him under again. Nesta was shoved into the water up to his shoulders. She bucked even as the water sprayed. She clawed and screamed her rage, her defiance. Put her under, King hissed. The guards, straining, shoved her slender shoulders her brown gold head. As they pushed her head down, she thrashed one last time, freeing her long, pale arm. Teeth bared, Nesta pointed one finger at the King of Hybern. One finger. A curse and a damning. A promise. And as Nesta's head was forced under the water, as that hand was violently shoved down, the King of Hybern had the good sense to look somewhat unnerved. Dark water lapped for a moment. The surface went flat. I vomited on the floor. The guards at last let Rysen kneel beside me in the growing pool of Cassian's blood. Let him tuck me into him as the cauldron again tilted. Water poured forth, Lucian hoisting Elaine in his arms, and out of the way, the bonds on Tamlin vanished, along with the gag. He was instantly on his feet, snarling at the king. Even the fist on my mind lightened to a mere caress, as if he knew he had won. I didn't care. Not as Nesta was sprawled upon the stones. I knew that she was different. From however Elaine had been made, Nesta was different. 
Even before she took her first breath, I felt it. As if the cauldron in making her had been forced to give her more than it wanted. As if Nesta had fought even after she went under, under and had decided that she was to be dragged to hell. She was taking that cauldron with her. <clears throat> As if that finger she pointed was now a death promise to the King of Highburn. Nesta took a breath, and when I beheld my sister with her somehow magnified beauty, her ears, when Nesta looked to me, rage, power, cunning. Then it was gone, horror and shock crumpling her face, but she didn't pause, didn't halt. She was free. She was loose. She was on her feet, tripping over her slightly longer, leaner limbs, ripping the gag from her mouth. Nesta slammed into Lucian, grabbing Elaine from his arms and screamed at him to get as he fell back. Get off her! Elaine's feet slipped against the floor, but Nesta gripped her upright, running her hands over Elaine's face, her shoulders, her hair. Elaine. 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 She sobbed. Cassian again stirred trying to rise to answer Nesta's voice as he held my sister and cried her name again and again. But Elaine was staring over Nesta's shoulder, at Lucian, whose face she had finally taken in. Dark brown eyes met one of the russet and one of the metal. Nesta was still weeping, still raging, still inspecting Elaine. Lucian's hands slackened at his sides. His voice broke as he whispered to Elaine. You're my mate. And that, my friends, was the end of chapter 65. Okay. Didn't see that one coming, but I guess Lucian and... Lucian, no. Lucian and Elaine are mates, sort of? I, I don't know if that means they're going to like each other, though. Just because you're a mate doesn't mean you like them at first, you know? There's a difference of being, like some random spiritual bond forcing you to be together and actually caring about each other and stuff like that. Like, I mean, at the beginning, like, if Fire and Rise, I think, even if they had made it super early, like, I don't know if that would have been just the be-all, end-all of them liking each other. Like, Rise had talked about before. Uh, I think it's a lot of the journey, you know? The journey that makes you realize who they are, who you are, and how y'all are together. Um, enough philosophical relationship WADA advice. <laughs> Y'all stay beautiful, stay hydrated, and what the heck is going to happen in the next chapter? <laughs>